Hey everybody, if you look behind me, you will see an animal shelter. And behind that animal shelter fence and walls, there are a lot of scared and anxious dogs and cats who have no home. They're scared. Some of them are have been on their own for their entire life and they got caught. Some of them have no hope and they're anxiously awaiting their imminent death. But I want to tell you a story, a true story. Years ago, I was working at a golf course and it was probably, oh, I, I, many, many years ago when I first came down here to Florida. And as I came down here to Florida and I was, had this job, I saw the ugliest thing I had ever seen in my entire life. There was the ugliest dog I had ever, ever seen. You wouldn't believe it. This dog, I, it, it was, it was, it must have been a hundred yards away. And I was working with this uh, um, uh, man uh, named Juan. And I said, Juan, do you see that dog right there? And he said, yeah. And his mouth just hung open. My mouth hung open. It was the absolutely most nastiest, ugliest dog I had ever seen. Let me give you a picture of it. This dog had no hair on its face. This dog had no hair on its belly. It had no hair on its back. It, it had a black tongue. It had foam coming out of its mouth. Nasty. Hang on. It had pussy oozy sores all over its body. It had, it had cracks and just bloody nasty stuff. I'm not going to go into, into detail. This dog was skinny. You could see all of its ribs because there was no fur on, on this dog, hardly at all. It was hunched over. It looked like it had total rabies and it was, the, it was scared. It was all alone and it obviously had not eaten in a long, long time. And I said, Juan, do you see that dog? If you gave me a thousand bucks, I would not touch that dog. He goes, yeah, you're right there. So the next day I came in and I was, and, and, and that dog was closer. And I went, oh my, my word. And the closer it got, the uglier it got. Every, and day after day. And then finally after several days that I didn't see the dog when I showed up. And I went, oh, that's awesome. The dog is not here. It's not here. That's cool. And then I went into where the golf carts were. And that dog was caught by this grumpy old na man named Marvin. And I went, oh my word. And this dog, it's like it was terribly ugly horribly ugly I, I words cannot convey how ugly this dog was so Marvin had him on a leash and Marvin says does anybody want this dog it's like oh yeah I want to take this gem home so anyway Marvin sat there and said look if nobody's going to take this dog we're going to put it down we're going to kill this dog and I went no you can't do that and so and uh, he asked a question he said does anybody have a gun oh yeah Marv I just happened to bring a gun to work and and the, the groundskeeper there who lived on the ground said I have a rifle and they took that rifle he went down brought the rifle and and they had this dog and he said does again does anybody want this dog because we're going to finish it off right now it is it is horribly ugly and it's just full of disease and everything else and it's like i don't want it nobody wanted that dog so he said five four three and as he began to count down folks that dog looked straight up at me and he looked at me square in the eyes and he began to wag his tail and i thought oh no in a moment you you can't kill this dog he was looking at me and he just, almost if a dog could smile, he smiled. And he just, the words can't convey it. The, the, what I saw, to make a long story short, he went three, two, one, and something came over me. And I said, I'll take the stupid dog. And, 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 and they stopped, and the guy with the gun, he said, what? And I said, I'll take the dog. And, and all of a sudden, the guy backed off from the trigger. I didn't know what I said. What was I doing? How could I, why in the, my right mind would I have wanted to save that dog? And they said, okay. And I put that dog in the back of my white truck because he wasn't going in the cab of my truck. And he left oozy, nasty, pussy stuff all over the side of my white truck. And you should have seen the looks when I was driving home. Some people, they were they had their mouth going on and just horrified how ugly that dog was. 
Others shook their fist when they were angry at me because they thought that I was the worst dog abuser in the world and they didn't know that I had rescued that dog. Well, to make a long story short, I took that dog home and I, first I took it to a vet and they said, this is the worst case of red mange we have ever, ever seen in our entire life. He said, sir, this is gonna cost you a lot of money to fix this dog up. And so I had heard an ancient remedy. I, this one guy told me if you put some used motor oil on him, believe it or not, it will actually heal him. And after much time, that dog was completely healed and he loved me and he followed me wherever I went. And I want you to listen to me, folks. You and I are just like that dog. God did not look down from heaven and say, oh, what a bunch of beautiful, kind, caring, loving people. They, oh, look how they care for one another. Look how they, they, they take care of one another. No, he looked down from heaven and he saw the degradation and the wickedness. And the Bible says in, in uh, Romans 5, 8, that he commended, he, he, he demonstrated, he showed his love towards us. And that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. What a savior. We could not work our way to heaven because of the wickedness and the filth and the degradation. So he came to us and he rescued us. Just like these dogs here. And this, they're just crying out for help. They have no hope. Some are angry. Some are helpless. They're full of anxiety. Jesus came to rescue you and I. And may we never ever Get over our salvation and all that Jesus has done for us. Amen? Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. 2 Corinthians 9, 15. May you and I never get over our salvation and may we live our life for an audience of one. Amen? God bless you.